YouTuber Lauren Southern appeared before the Public Safety and National Security Committee to talk about Russian disinformation. Welcome to the Canadian Shield. My name is Sterling. I'm your host. YouTuber Lauren Southern appeared before the uh, Committee on Public Safety and National Security, this kind of witch hunt that the Liberals have going on for Russian misinformation so that they can try to scare the Canadian population into giving them control over their lives. Like I would want to give the Liberal Party, imagine, control over what I have to say and what I can hear and what I can listen to. Doesn't that sound just like a total Marxist wet dream? Now, in full disclosure, I'm not a huge fan of Lauren Southern. I get that she's a Canadian, but I remember when she was running around the world talking about immigration and then did a big bait and switch on all of her followers and basically made fun of them for listening to her. And then she went away to raise her new baby and I guess came back and hoped that nobody would remember. But, I mean, I don't have any problem that who she got married to or who, or any of that. I do have a real problem with telling me one thing and then doing another. That's no different than Justin Trudeau. Now, having said all that, I think that she held herself pretty well. She was fairly aggressive toward the liberal side. The NDP and the liberals come after her pretty good. The conservatives didn't really pay much attention to her. They like one round of the conservatives. They just let it go at like four minutes. They were like, Oh, I'm good and they passed the, the comments over to the liberals and another one the guy spoke for a minute and then he said oh i have something i want to tell the chair and he made up he proposed a motion <laughs> so they weren't really very interested not certainly not invested in talking to lauren southern the ndp however and the liberals were all over her talking about you know different things and i saved one aspect of it but i thought that you might like to watch her some of her opening statement I found to be pretty on the on the mark. As we launch into it, I'll just say that I have applaud her use of time in this particular five minute segment, which I cut down to like a minute, minute and a half. But <laughs> she takes she takes them to school. I'll be straight. I always seek to fight disinformation in all of its forms, and therefore I have a duty to inform this committee that disinformation has been spreading within these very walls. To claim that Tenet controlled those subscribers would be like claiming that a TV network had influence over the United States presidency because they air reruns of The Apprentice. Anyone with even a cursory understanding of new media would know, however, that $10 million for 16 million views on YouTube hardly qualifies as extraordinary value. In fact, it qualifies as a total failure. So there is, in fact, a silver lining here. If the allegations are true, it appears Russia did attempt to influence Western media, but they failed pretty miserably. Arguably, the largest actual impact on Canadians here has been the amount of tax dollars they've had to spend investigating this non-issue. Some in the media and this government seem to have concluded that the only reason a regular Canadian could possibly hold certain views that do not align with the current Liberal administration is because of perni pernicious, widespread Russian disinformation. I would like to propose an alternative hypothesis, and I know it may sound insane, I know this breaches the borders of conceivable thought, but maybe, just maybe, some Canadians consulted their own moral compass and decided they don't want this country funding foreign wars. Maybe they looked around them at the hospital lineups or housing prices and thought immigration might be a little high. Maybe they lost their business during lockdown and think, I worry about my freedoms in this country. Some in this government are hell-bent on drastically exaggerating the extent of foreign influence because they can't can't seem to stomach the idea that they might be wrong about something and that a growing majority of Canadians legitimately and organically oppose what they are doing. They simply can't conceive that they are becoming unpopular naturally, so there must be foul play at work. So I think that she said all of the appropriate things there. I, just, I, I really enjoy how she finished with telling the Liberals that it's beyond their conception, which I say all the time, it's beyond their conception that it, it's just that people don't like you, right? Which is so many things on the far left that they they i think in the far left's mind it's it's wrong that you don't like them or something like that like i i mean taking even just if we take the liberal out of the out of the argument out of the conversation i mean take for example all of the ists and all of the phobias i don't have to like you but i'll i'll save that for a different video i think in this one it's really funny to watch her and i told you i'm not a big fan but she did 
use that five minutes to tell them right off to embarrass them pretty well. And I applaud her for that. Now, there was a couple of times in the in the rounds, like I said, the conservatives, they didn't really pay that much attention to her. They asked her a few cursory questions and then they basically, you know, surrendered the microphone or talked about something else. The block wasn't too bad, though, though um, she did give her Lauren. So I didn't keep it because it was primarily in French, but I uh, Lauren Southern did have the time to say, you know, that there's many, many of the Justin Trudeau's decisions that are affecting her life negatively. And she talked about how CSIS came to her door and started stalking her and chasing her around, the, you know, following her to the gym and things like that, which I think to be a little bit, I mean, if all the people, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're chasing people around, why are you not chasing around the 175 foreign agents, right? Like, there are so many people in this country to be chasing around, except for some woman who's, you know, just trying to get a, a, a career off the ground or, you know, whatever it may be, going to the gym. All of the, all of the, um, I mean, you should be chasing the people that were in the, in the Winnipeg labs, for example, you know? But that's just the, the the problem with the far left, isn't it? They're just hell bent on looking for something that doesn't exist because really it seems that they're not looking out for your best interest. They're trying to take big chunks of power for themselves, right? They're trying to make it so that they can control what you say. I, for one, am not going to be part of that. I say that right now. I'll tell you that for free. But I suppose, again, that's a different video. I think she did well. I think that she, you know, put them right in their place in the first five minute segment there, especially as she was talking about how it's hard for them to understand that they just don't agree with their policies. <laughs> That's good stuff. I'll give you some interaction between her and MP Dam off. And I think that it's, it's pertinent to, to point out that MP Damoff had made a motion earlier talking about how we have to be careful, we have to start fighting the rise of Islamophobia. And and I assume that it's because there's a lot of people in her writing. That's the only reason politicians do anything, right? It's for the people in their writing. And that's not a for this video. What is important is that though they, they call this woman to the talk to them about Russian mis misinformation, all she seemed to want to do is criticize her, right? She didn't ask her, she didn't enlighten her, she didn't try to get to the how it, the system might be working and how misinformation might be coming through uh, the microphone of Lauren Southern. She just simply wanted to claw at her. And to Lauren Southern's credit, she gave it back just as good as she was getting it, maybe even a little better, if I'm honest. I'll just be honest. I'm, why would you want to platform someone like that? The exact same reasons, reasons Steve Pakin did and TVO did because he is an interesting geopolitical figure and I... Uh, do, you, do you agree with his views on, on Ukraine? No. I don't think we should kill, kill, kill the Ukrainians. On the contrary, I think we should... Not, not a big fan of killing people, Ukrainian or otherwise. And do you, do you prescribe to his anti-Semitic views? No. No, once again. Um, you're interviewing me right now. Do you agree with all of my opinions? No, I actually find some of them quite offensive. And you were barred from going to the UK, is that correct? Uh, yes, I was barred from going to the UK. And why was that? That was because I tried to set up a pride parade in Luton, and the Islamic population there typically are not a big fan of that. And so you went to Russia to stir up hatred against Jews? <laughs> I'm so sorry. What? What are you referring to? Look who, you, look who you, you, you deliberately made a trip to Russia to interview someone who is, is one of the most anti-Semitic people around. Is, like, is it just to be controversial? Is that, do uh, you find that what, funny? What part, yeah, I do find it funny that you were accusing me of taking a trip to Russia to stir up hatred around Jews when I don't think Jews came up once during my interview with Alexander Dugan. I don't know where you're getting that from. Oh, that was pretty good. I mean, the amount of people that we could talk about that are anti-Semitic that are are being representative in, in Canada right now, and this one was trying to talk about some guy on the other side of the world. And I think she burned her really well when she talked about um, how you're interviewing me right now. Do you agree with my views? And it's like, whoa, <laughs> that was a really good one. Like, that was a good burn, I think. 
But of course, it, it, it's easy to burn the liberals because they come from such a position of hatred, right? They come from such a position of narrow-mindedness. They're not looking for the truth. They're not looking for the facts. They're not looking for enlightenment. They're only looking to, to blame and to punish. I think we see that here when she was, you know, trying to talk about misinformation and all she really wanted to do was criticize Miss Southern's approach to her business. And I don't, I don't really know much about the guy that they were talking about. If I'm completely candid with you, I'm assuming that they did an interview on TVO, like they did a documentary on the guy and Lawrence Southern went to Russia to interview the guy as well. And they, I get that he's a high ranking member of Putin, Putin's, uh, inner circle. But otherwise, I never heard of him at all. But I'm not fixated on trying to blame everybody for everybody else's problems. I'm trying to fix the problems that we got going on in this country right now around all of the issues that we that we talk about. And the only reason that it seems that the only reason they scooped up Lauren Southern is because she was associated with Tenant Media, like she was an employee of Tenant Media. It doesn't seem like they had any hard evidence against her. Now, Lauren Southern is the type of person that likes to stir up controversy, as you can tell by her trying to put a pride parade in one of the, you know, the densely populated um, Muslim areas of, of Britain. Another one is that technically, or I don't know if she changed it back, but I remember that she st caused a lot of uh, stir up because, you know, years back she had gone into a doctor in downtown Toronto and in, in the course of an hour, got the doctor to sign the paper to change her birth certificate from a female to a male. That was one of the, her claims to fame, you know, and I mean, otherwise, I don't see that they, they have anything on her, right? I can see that she might want to be a sensationalist, sort of like Howard Stern. So all in all, I have to agree with uh, Ms. Southern that she, this is a waste of taxpayers' dollars. I mean, they, they're not getting to the bottom of anything. They're just looking to point fingers and to create sensationalism around the tenant media bust or arrest or whatever you want, investigation that's down in the United States of America, which who knows how that'll go when the administration changes. I don't I don't know. Maybe they'll chase it down. Maybe they won't. I, I can't speak to the motivations of the New York Southern Bronx, you know, attorney generals or whatever it is that's going after them. District attorneys, excuse me. I can say that the Liberal Party, again, managed to put egg on their own face by talking about something that was unrelated to the issue and simply going after Ms. Southern for her election, her elected uh, for choices that she's made in, in trying to further her career. I should imagine that there were plenty of people that watched an interview with, with such an, in, an individual. There must be plenty of people that would like to hear what he has to say if he's so controversial. I mean, isn't that the nature of humanity? Don't, don't we always want to hear from the people that are the most shocking? Can't see how any of Ms. Damoff's questions, MP Damoff's questions, were going to bring us closer to solving the misinformation, which of course makes you wonder if the liberals are so hell-bent on bringing in all of this restrictive legislation, should they not be better prepared? Should they not have their questions a little further honed? Should they not be basing it more than, uh, on fact rather than just a, an attack of personalities? Maybe it's not what it appears to be. Hmm? All right, I'm going to wrap here. I want to thank you for listening. I'll talk to you next time.